hi we're back this is our beautiful model Diane you might recognize her um, from the secret box class I did Diane is 57 um, I hate the word mature models oh my goodness I can't stand that word we're not mature we're women and we're fabulous um, what well, yeah okay so uh, I'm gonna show you to, as a makeup artist, it's just really good to know how we age. Um, that way, you can choose an area. If there's an area that you focus on or you don't like this part or that part, I can show you all the little tricks. You can choose the ones that you want as a makeup artist. It's really important when you work with someone just to know them anyway. And when I'm doing someone's makeup, I always think of my anti-aging techniques, throw them in there, because again, you want women to go, you haven't done a lot to me, but what you've done, I look younger. So even this is a foundation class, um, my opening sentence is probably the one thing that I was told that floored me um, when I was at a seminar. So I was on a panel for ASAP, it's a Plastic Surgery Association, and there was a question asked, and I'm a non-doctor in a medical conference, and there was a leading surgeon on stage, and leading surgeons in the audience, and one of the world's best plastic surgeons were on stage, and it was question time. And the question that he was asked was, if you could do one procedure to a woman's face or a man's face to make them look younger, what would it be? And I sat on the edge of my seat, because we were talking, is it laser, is it surgery, is it threading? Blah, blah, blah. He said something that's changed my life. He said, I would not chase a wrinkle, I would not chase a line, I would even out her skin tone. And I'm like, whoa, I'm a makeup artist. We have a thing called foundation. I have women we have the strongest weapon in our hands he proceeded with that to show a photo of a woman from queensland who was in her late 70s who had smoked a long time and sunbaked a long time and she was quite sun damaged and for someone in her mid 70s she did look i would say in her 80s because of the damage in photoshop in one photo he took all the wrinkles out and she didn't look younger she just looked a bit odd um, in the second photo, he left every wrinkle and made her skin tone milky creamy. She looked 45, 50 and I, it floored me. And I started to think about my mum and my friends' mums and women when they get older and they always ask me about makeup advice and I noticed that most of my women 50s, 60s, it's always about the lipstick, lipstick, lipstick. And the thing is that a red lipstick, women say they want more colour but adding redness can make your skin look more red. Anyway, so the reason I brought this topic in today is because foundation is about evening your skin tone. So ladies and gentlemen, that is your number one weapon. Just so you know, she has nothing on her skin. We have put a light mascara, and all I have done is I've done a craline just to remove any oil off her skin and off her eyelids, and I've used a stronger, a really strong um, moisturizer, sickle fat, which is really heavy put it on there and let it soak. I'm just gonna even put some more on. Um, and she says, Diane says she has dry skin. She's been a model for a long time, so I'm gonna believe her. Um, and I'm just gonna put it in the skin. Okay, so what happens, and this happens to men as well, but we get what we call really hollow in our temples. Hence why contouring through this area can be even more aging. Okay, so we get hollow through here. We get hollow in this area here, we get deeper, and what they call labial folds, we get deeper through here. So yeah, the other thing too, if you fill here, what happens when you smile, you lose your eyes. And if you fill too much in there, you can make the face look really rounded. Also, I remember, I think it was Stephen Louis, a plastic surgeon said, that if you fill through here, you don't make women look younger. So I think having those beautiful curves and creases is what makes women look beautiful. Dan's quite lucky, if you can get quite hollow in these areas, um, you're not too deep in here. And then we get things like we can have longer earlobes, they can drop down. Women cop a battering in the decolletage area. I think it's because the clothes that we wear. And the other thing that we do get, oh, two more things, sorry. We, our brow bone becomes really predominant. So what can happen, our eyes can sink back. So we can look really strong in the brow. So we're not gonna highlight this area. Um, we have a highlighting and cheek video contouring coming up in our next video. And the last one, and you're lucky as well here, is the lip. So we get a bit of this lip, lip drag. When it comes to skin, we've got to look at, now there's highlighting and contouring. I'm not talking about shimmer highlight and cheekbones. I'm talking about lightening and darkening. So what I want to do with Diane is give her beautiful looking healthy skin. I want to lighten the temple area a little bit there and just do little tricks that's going to 
put that bit more of a rounded shape in. So, what I'm going to do first is match the foundation. The foundation I'm going to use today, I love it. It's called Kogen Go, it's Japanese. It just makes the skin look like skin. So what I've done is I've used Kraline all over to cleanse. I've used the Sickle Fat, the moisturizer, because she's got dry skin. And now, because I'm obsessed with sunscreen, this is some primer. This is my new favorite at the moment, Dermalogica. It's got sunscreen 30. Now, Diane has some pigmentation. We all have pigmentation. I don't want to cover it because you can. Absolutely you can, and there's foundations that will do that. I've used Dermacolor to do that. But I don't want to have her skin completely covered. One, it won't look natural. Two, if we have beautiful movement, so let's like, see, no Botox here, it's fine. <laughs> She's got beautiful movement. If I put thick foundation on, thick application gets into lines. Plus, if she puts a single on, it makes no sense to have a fully covered face with pigment through the body. So what I do on the face, I reflect on the body as well. So this is on my um, 28 brush. Sorry for my sticky tape on there. Um, I tape them when I'm sampling them and test them. You can just see her skin just looks so beautiful. Now, because she's got paler, pale, milky, medium pale skin, a little bit of pigment, the pigment can make it look darker. So I'm choosing um, a color that matches her skin perfectly. And if you have a bit of pigmentation, when you put the foundation, you can feel a little bit paler, but that's okay. I always say, always buy two foundations. Gosh, your skin feels like heaven. Mm. Always buy two foundations, because if you tan in summer or if you use fake tan, it's really important. So now I've just got a darker one. And this, I'll put the length of the color, same brand, foundation, and really subtly. The trick with anyone that has um, fine lines, um, it's about minimal. So if you do like coverage, like I always say, buy a foundation that has more coverage, but just use less product. See, I think her skin looks beautiful. I love seeing a bit of pigment, it's beautiful. It's like freckles, I love it. Whatever foundation you use on the skin, it's really important to bring it right up under the eye. The reason for that is cameras on iPhones are very sensitive now. So if you just use one color and then one separate concealer color, if you don't match those tones, you're gonna like you've got little raccoon eyes going on. So always, whatever foundation you use, take it right up under the eye. Now you can see already there's a lot of oil on Diane's eye. It's very, very common. But the problem with oil, it just makes eyeshadow just become a mess. So I'm going to I've just got my cellar water. I'm just going to take that off again. I did put lots of moisturizer on before. I normally don't moisturize the eyelids because of this problem. Um, so that's just a really good tip. If you're doing foundation and you're doing hair and you come back to start makeup, before you touch eyeshadow, make sure your eyelids aren't oily. And if they are, cleanse them again. Put a fresh soft washer foundation. If you have parts of the skin, you go, okay, like she just has this little scar just through here and you wanna cover it more. This is the Derma Color, it's color D52. These cover tattoos, they're very, very thick. But if you put too much on the skin, they're gonna crease. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little bit just into that scar area. When you're buying concealers, make sure you get a really good color match. They always will look slightly lighter, these ones I find, when you first put them on, but when the body heats them up, they soften and melt into the skin. So it's okay to pop a little bit on the skin like that. Just, I don't wanna cover it, I just wanna even a little bit more. I'm not gonna put any concealer through that area because it's gonna crease. Eyes up for me, a little bit in here, a little bit in here. So this is something you can do so quickly in the morning. I actually have these little cups if you're a pro artist. They're actually um, nail artist cups for resin, I think. And I have Kraling a bottle of micellar water in one and water in the other because I always want to make sure. Yes, I've let that concealer sit there. I'm just waiting for it to heat up. I always just want to make sure I have no color in my eyebrows. And I make sure the lips are really clean of product. If you leave foundation on there, 
you'll get this cakey whiteness. So if I want to cover the area quite a lot, I don't, I want to use, I want to press it into the skin. That's when I use a beauty blender or any sponge. Try and make sure, um, this one's from Crown. It's a really nice affordable one. We'll put a link up for you. Um, Eddie could have some great ones. Whatever sponge you buy, get ones that when you wet them, they blow up. They actually grow in size. I love them because they hold water, but they don't put too much water on the skin. And what I like about them is they just press and you can be a bit firm with them because it feels like a nice little pillow touching your eyes. It's also nice if you're working with someone who's really sensitive in the eyes. Like if I find if I have to do a, a man's makeup who's not, he's not a model who, or he's just got to go on TV, they panic, they're not used to it. So having a sponge near an eye is actually a lot more um, forgivable. I'm going to tan you ever so slightly. Now you can do this with like a Tom Ford contour colour or just a darker foundation. And all I'm gonna do is around the forehead. This is my brush number 23.1. This is probably my top three favorite brushes. It's a contour brush, but you can really, you can pinch it together and get like really cut the cheeks for contouring, which I wouldn't do here, um, and blend out. It's for getting in fine areas. Good for blonde hair if you don't wanna get foundation in the hair. So I'm just, the reason I'm doing this is for two reasons. One, to give the skin a bit of color. So you can see what's happening now. The skin has just, a, like it's got a little bit more life in it. Now, I am not gonna contour through Diane because Diane has a little bit of hollowing through there. If I contour her, it's gonna make her, it's it make the face look too thin. However, if you've got cheeks, and we are going to cover this a lot more extensively when we come to our, our contour class. Like I said, no contouring here at all because the temple hollowing and under the cheeks. However, if you do, if you're at home and you have this indentation but you're quite full and you want more of a cheek, what you do, and I won't do it on Diane because it's not going to suit her skin, but I'll just give you a bit of a preview to what we're doing on our next class. I contour corner of the ear to the lip. I use this shade in this angle. But if you want to lift the face, you're gonna shade this way. And what it does, it just lifts those cheeks. I'm just gonna do a hint of blush. Now Diane's not going to smile, because, just smile for one second. If you smile and put blush on and then relax, you can create little lines. It's, this is, I love these. So this is um, a brand Trini. You know, this color is, it's called Lip to Cheek and it's called Freddy. And it's that beautiful rosy color. Now, before, I was saying about evening skin tone. When we get older, we tend to get redness into our skin, we naturally get more redness. So applying things like blush, a lot of women say, don't put blush on me because it makes me look red. Um, putting red lipsticks can bring out redness. So the trick to anti-aging is take the redness out with the foundation and then put it back in where it needs to be to give yourself that youthful look. This is just magic. Clear powder, silicon, it's a breathable silicon, and areas like, see the tip of the nose, watch what happens here. Can you see that shine on the camera, Jim? Yeah. Yep, okay, so see that? Watch what happens, gone, bang. Just above the brow, gone, bang. Just above, the, it is so hot in here, by the way, it is like 5,000 degrees. Just put your lip down, uh, uh, and I'm just gonna come, I'll just do this side so you can see the difference. Relax there for me. So you get this beautiful, moisturized looking skin, but you just pull down the shine without it looking bad. Look at the eyelids, have a look at the eye, look down for me. So look how shiny that is. I'm just gonna smooth that out. And this is great on the eyelids, because sometimes that's all I want is natural skin. I don't, you don't have to put eyeshadow on everyone's eyelids. Just a wash of foundation and take out the grease. And then if you have a look at the difference, so look down. See, you've got an oilier looking eyelid and the skin, see the shine through there. And then you come around this side, you've got the healthy dewiness through here, but you've just killed it in there, in here, above the eyebrow, and nose. I'll do a little bit of a quick eyebrow. I'm just gonna finish off the brow here. Thank you, Di Diane, she doesn't know this, this won't be the last, we'll be getting Diane back again. And just quickly, this, this was her outfit today. I'll take a sheer washer foundation and just wash it down here. And the last tip, if you are putting any highlight, I wouldn't, highlight will enhance lines. But if you wanna put like, um, if you do wanna put highlight on the skin, whatever highlight you put on, you reflect on the body. So what I mean by that, if you've got a really matte, matte face, 
Don't have a shiny, shiny, shiny body. Okay, so if you powder here, powder here. Um, thank you so much.